Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Our God is a great God. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. In John 1, verse 16, it said, And of his fullness have we received, and grace mm. for grace. What a wonderful time to come together again. We thank God for what God has been doing in our lives. We are grateful to be alive. All we have been able to do and achieve up to this third quarter of the year 2020 is by the grace of God. God is faithful and he is always yeah. faithful. We want to thank God also. This is our, our month of double honor. And today is the 30th, the last day of the month. We want to appreciate God for bringing us thus far. And uh, by the grace of God, this evening we'll be studying walking in honor. And that honor will be found in your life and in the life of all the members of this church in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. On behalf of our senior pastor, Pastor James, and the pastors of the house, and on behalf of our God Almighty, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, I welcome every one of us to tonight's Bible study. I want you to get your pen and paper, be in the spirit, be connected. And I know at the end of this Bible study today, your life will never be the same. Uh, may I quickly just use this opportunity to welcome a friend of my pastor, Simon Bolter, who has joined us all the way from Pakistan. It's well past midnight in Pakistan, where he insisted he would be joining us, and he's here with us. I welcome you, and I know our senior pastor will have something to say. So I welcome every one of us once again, and God bless you. Shalom. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Apostle Patrick. It's uh, with great joy yes, that um, we are invite you. We're welcoming um, our friend. Um, Pastor Salman Bhutta from Pakistan. We're so, so happy that you are able to join us tonight. Thank you so much for making the time to fellowship with God's children. Um, it is so wonderful. It's wonderful. Thank you so much. And we also have our friend, Pastor Paul. Pastor Paul, who joined us two weeks ago, he's joining us from Birmingham. Uh, Pastor Paul, you are welcome. You are most, most welcome. The Lord bless you. So uh, please, um, because I don't know if Pastor Buta um, will still be able to be with us until the end of the service, but Pastor Salmon, well, I would like to invite you to just uh, say um, a little word to us. Just greet us from Pakistan. We want to hear your, your voice uh, and uh, greetings from Pakistan. God bless you. Go ahead, sir. Go ahead, sir. Greeting everyone in Jesus' name. And I'm very happy today to meet with all my brother and sister who are in this meeting. And I'm very happy to join you on this night. And I wish I will continue join this Bible study and I will keep part of this Bible study. And we will be work together in mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, sir. Thank Amen. you. Yeah, we, we are going to be we're going to be we're going to be inviting you. Um in a um, in couple of weeks to also be able to take some of our, our studies so that we can share together um, with you and we can also be blessed by you as well. Uh, so please feel free to invite some of your other friends in Pakistan and in India and encourage them to join us. And I know that the Almighty God who um, has called us into the service he will continue to uh, uphold us and bless us in Jesus' name. I appreciate Amen. you so much, sir. The Lord bless you. Thank you so much. Um, and I'm going to take your number from Apostle Patrick. I will speak to you tomorrow just to personally introduce myself to you so that we can build a good relationship straight away. Amen. Praise God. My brother, uh, because of the time difference, uh, it is difficult to join you. But uh, I have a wish to join you. That is why I woke up and midnight I'm joining you. So I will yeah. be sharing your link with my other friends. 
and be encouraged to others if they are possible and they love the word of god then they will be join you and we will work together in mighty name of jesus amen 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 that's lovely i'm so encouraged god bless you and pastor pauline uh, pastor paul from birmingham please you stay online don't go we're going to listen to you after the bible study um we're going to invite you to actually do the closing prayer and then you're going to just share a little word with us uh, tonight before uh, we uh, close so god bless everyone who has um, tuned in tonight i pray that the blessings of god will come upon us and through the bible study teaching of tonight the lord will take us into the next realm and level of walking in honor to the glory of god in jesus name amen all right, I'll hand over to Pastor Olajide Phillips. Uh, that's our uh, resident pastor of um, our church in Lagos, Nigeria. So he's going to be taking um, the Bible study tonight. God bless you. All right, thanks so much, Daddy. Good evening, everyone. The Lord bless you. Once again, I'd like us to just lift our voice and just appreciate the Lord for making us see the end of the month of September, we've just ended the third quarter of this year. It's been good all the way. Let me just say thank you, Father, for how far you have brought me and my family, the church. You, you have brought us this far. Lord, we are grateful. We must be grateful. We must be grateful. Be intentional about mm -hmm. this. Be intentional. Just say, Father, thank you for bringing us thus far as a church. Thank you for my family. Thank you for my thank business. You. Thank you for thank everything you have done. In this last nine months, it's been amazing, Lord. We give you all the Thank praise. You, we give you all the Hallelujah. praise, Jesus. Hallelujah. In Jesus' Hallelujah. mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All right, tonight, by the grace of God, um, I'm going to um, continue on the series that the um, Holy Spirit helped us to start uh, about two weeks ago when we talked about um, walking in honor, part one. So I'm trusting the Lord tonight that in the few minutes that I have, that I'm able to finish up the series by the grace of God. So I'd like you to please just follow, and we're going to have some scriptures, um, a lot of them tonight. I pray the Holy Spirit teach us in Jesus' name. All right, Amen. just a quick recap. That some of us that were not here in the last time, um, we treated walking in honor, part one. The last time I told us that, you know, walking in honor, it's, um, it's, it's, it's that theme for the month, and honor is, now DNA by by default according to Genesis chapter one verse twenty eight and according to Second Peter two verse nine that says that we are a chosen generation a royal priesthood so this tells us that we are made of honor so when God created us we all male young and old we are all made of honor and also told us that there are two set of people those who walk in honor carefully and those who through carelessness walk out of this out of honor praise the lord and i told us that for us to walk in honor for us to walk in number we looked at one way that day and then we said integrity you must be a man or a woman of integrity that if you're going to walk in in, in honor for the rest of your life you must be a man that keeps to his or her words you must be a woman that keeps to her words you must be a man that keeps to his words you must not say yesterday and tomorrow you say i know i didn't say that it was a mistake so such way you'll be able to walk in honor. So tonight, by the grace of God, I'm going to share the other parts which are very important for us if we're going to walk in honor for the rest day of our life. I always say this, that there's a place of prayer and there's a place of character building. There, is, there are certain things that prayer will not do and there are certain things that prayer will do. If you don't have character and you're praying, it looks as if you are building on a wrong foundation. And that was the Bible says that if the foundation is destroyed, what can the righteous do? So tonight, what we are just doing in this month, you know, on church on Sunday, I was telling them that the reason why God gave us this thing for this month, walking double honor, is that there is something God wants to do in our lives in the months to come. So it's using this month to prepare our hearts. We just left the lockdown and the pandemic, and so is to train our mind to work on some part of our lives that so that when we get to that place that is bringing us to, we won't have to be regretting that, oh, I should have worked on all this thing. So tonight, I'm trusting the Lord that is going to teach us his word again in the name of Jesus. So let's continue now. We've talked about number one. So number two tonight, if you're going to walk in honor, you must 
be humble. You must be humble. Humility must be your watchword if you're going to be going to walk in honor. I'm going to read Exodus chapter 5, verse 1 to verse 4. That's going to be our anchor scripture. Exodus chapter 5, verse 1 to verse 4. And afterward, Moses and Aaron went in and told Pharaoh, Thus says the Lord God of Israel, Let my people go, that they may hold a feast unto me in the wilderness. And Pharaoh said, Who is the Lord, that I should obey his voice, to let Israel go? I know not the Lord, neither will I let Israel go. And they said, The God of Hebrew that had made us, let us go, we pray thee, three days journey in the desert, and sacrifice unto the Lord our God, lest he fall upon us with pestilence or with sword. Verse 2 is where I'm going to stretch it. And Pharaoh said, Who is the Lord that I should obey? You know, anytime you raise your voice against the Almighty God, God usually reacts violently to anyone that raise his voice against him or try to show himself more than himself. In the case of Pharaoh, we saw when Moses and Aaron appeared before him and they were telling him that there was an instruction from the Almighty God. And the response from Pharaoh is that, who is this your God? Who is this your God? And if you read from chapter 6 to verse chapter 17, 6, 8, and 9, and verse 10, you will discover that because of that act, because Pharaoh was not humble, he was destroyed in the Red Sea and himself and his chariots and all his men. They all were destroyed in the Red Sea because what? They did not regard God. So if you're going to walk in honor, you must be a man or a woman of. You must be a man that is humble at all times. According to. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 2. The Bible says that pride comes when it comes. What comes after is shame. You know, what God is telling us in the month of September is that instead of double, instead of shame, I will give you double honor. Proverbs 11 says, pride comes. When pride comes, then comes shame. So if you don't regard God, humble yourself. What, he or she, what the person is invariably inviting is shame, which God has said in the book of Isaiah that instead of shame, I will give you double honor. But if you don't humble yourself before God, Almighty God, such person is inviting what God said is going to turn to double honor. So if anyone's going to walk in double honor, you must be a man or a woman of, that is humble, humble at all times. Again, in the book of Proverbs 16, verse 18, very popular scripture, Proverbs 16, verse 18, the Bible says that pride goes before destruction. <laughs> it goes before destruction, which means that any time you try to raise yourself above what if you are not, you are ahead of it prepare a destruction, a kind of value that is going to take all over the thing. The day that Pharaoh said that, who is your God? <laughs> Resi had opened up his mouth to destroy him. Resi had opened his mouth the day he said, who is your God that I will let Israel go? So pride goes before the structure. What it means is that any time you refuse to humble yourself before the Almighty God, such person opens door to destruction. The day you open your mouth or you do not regard God, you do not humble yourself before Him, such person opens door to destruction. My prayer for us tonight that we will not be destroyed in the name of Jesus. Quickly, what are the reasons or what can bring someone to a state whereby he or she will say i've been destroyed or is walking towards destruction pride can destroy any man regardless of your state regardless of your background regardless of your your connection if you are a man or a woman that is not humble such person 
is opening door or doors to destruction. Quickly look at this. Reasons why pride brings destruction. Number one, it blinds us to our weaknesses. Number two, it causes self-focus and consider others less important. Someone that is proud will never see reasons why he or she needs to be corrected. Number three, pride causes people to reject help when they need it. Philippians 2, 3 and 4. Philippians chapter 2, verse 3 and verse 4. Pride also do not allow them to listen or learn from other people. Proverbs 2, verse 3 and 4 says, let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. So if I have an opportunity to make you more better than me, that is what Paul was saying here. Don't esteem yourself more than other people. You are trying to make the world so difficult for other people. You're trying to make life so difficult for other people. Thinking that you are the only one in the world. <laughs> no, Paul is saying that. Let nothing be done through strife, but in lowness of mind, let every one of us esteem other better than yourself. So if anyone is going to walk in honor, you must understand that one of the character you must build is humility. You must be humble. You must be humble. Again, Pride is a blinder that keeps people from realizing that they are prideful. Romans 12 verse 3. Pride is a blinder. It allows them not to see that they are actually pride. They are actually proud. It keeps them from seeing the wrong thing they are doing. It keeps them from seeing that they are actually doing the wrong thing. Romans 12 verse 3 says, through the grace given to unto me, to every man that is among you, let not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but think soberly, according as God has dealt with every man, according to the measure of faith. Don't think yourself more highly than and other people. Don't ever think that because you are in a position today that you are more than B. Because you're in a position today, you are more than C. <laughs> Always remember that everyone that God has created, God has created an appointed time. It might be your turn today that you are shining. It might be your point today that you are leading. It might be your point that you are the one in the front row. Remember that you cannot stay in that place forever. What you can do is to be humble. Because every one of us is going to need one and another in the journey of life. No one gets to the up, the top by himself. Someone will definitely going to uplift you or pull you up. But if you don't humble yourself at the time that you are up there, when you are coming down, the same people that you humiliated, that you do not, that you look down on, are the set of people that are going to meet coming down. And that is why you must understand that honor. It's not something that you can wear a cloth and say, it's, I'm the one that has the cloth and it's me forever. Every one of us has been given that honor. But what God is saying to us is that I want to put on you double honor that you will work for the rest of your life. But God does not put a, a double honor on a vessel that is not humble. God will not put such on him. And that was why Pharaoh was destroyed. You know, God was looking at Pharaoh when he was doing all he was doing in the land of Egypt. God left him to be doing it. But the day he raised his mind against God and said, who is your God? God reacted violently to it and he prepared wow. a destruction for him. And he was destroyed. Both himself, the chariot, and his horsemen were all destroyed in the Red Sea because what? he did not humble himself before the Almighty God. You know, Pharaoh could have enjoyed the honor he's enjoying as a king. God wouldn't have done anything to him. Because one, he's a king, so he has some measure of power to exercise over the people. At that time, he wasn't doing anything so bad. But the day he raised his voice against God, destruction was set for him. It might be 15 years. It might be 10 years. If such person does not repent, or he or she did not repent, that destruction will definitely come. I pray again for someone tonight. 
that you will not be destroyed in the name of Jesus. You will not Amen. be destroyed. But for you not to be destroyed, you must be a man. That humility is your watchword. Not right. humble only with mouth. I mean, in your looking, in your dressing. We're not saying that as a Christian, you should be a fool. No, Christianity is not foolishness. No, but when it comes to humility, is that you don't override other people, you don't talk down anybody, you don't overlook anybody. You exalt every other person as much as God gives you grace. You make them much better than you. That's what Paul is encouraging us. Such way you are treading on double honor. Anyone you help in the course of joining life, they will definitely return back to you. And such honor are always most time bigger than the one you did. So, as believers, we must understand that God is interested in us and he wants to take us to a greater height. But the question is that, how humble are you? Another case study in the book of Numbers, chapter 16, Numbers chapter 16, we saw a story about three guys. They, are, they were called Korah, Datan, and Abraham. They were destroyed because of pride. They raised their voice against God's servants. And they, were, they, they told Moses, who, who, who are you? Are you the only one that can hear, that can hear, that can hear God's voice? Are we not, are we not here to, to hear God's voice? You know, they, they try to raise their voice against God's servants. And God reacts violently to anyone that raises his voice against God's servants or himself. God usually reacts violently. We are told that the ground opened and, and swallowed the three of them instantly. The yeah. only sin they committed was because they raised their voice against God's servants. Mm. They were not humble enough. They could have enjoyed the honor for the rest of their life if they did not say anything to Moses. They forgotten that God appointed Moses to rule and lead them. But because they were not humble, they lost their place in honor. Again, I pray for you that you will not lose your place in honor in Jesus' name. You know, Amen. what pride does to a man is that it makes you think that you are better than other people. It makes you think that you are better than your leader. It makes you think that you are better than your colleagues. That's what pride, that's what it does to a man. Unknowingly, that man is dying of gradually. Take a look at a man that is very, very proud. They are dying of, because they don't accept correction, therefore they are dying of gradually. Inside, they are dying of gradually. You know, the case of Jesus Christ, uh, you know, anytime I, I, I share the story, it's always uh, sound amazing. You know, many people think that Jesus was just 33 years old when he came to earth. You know, they read from New Testament that Jesus, you know, lived on earth for 30 years and then he, he, he served ministry for three years. So the total lifespan of Jesus on earth was 33 years old. But, you know, in theology, we're told and we read, according to John chapter 1, verse, John chapter 1, that says that in the beginning was the word. And That's the word right. was with God, and the word yeah. was God. God, Jesus yeah. Christ has been living before the word began. So That's he's older right. than anybody you can ever think. As old as mm -hmm. God is, Jesus is as old as God. Because Amen. John told us that in the beginning was the word, and we are told that mm -hmm. Jesus is the word. So Jesus yeah. is not 33 years old. He, though he died 2,000 years ago, but he's more older than 2,000. <laughs> so, you, if Jesus could humble himself, a man that is older, older, before he even came to heads, he has been living, he has been living the time of Abraham, the time of Adam and Eve, and he came and lived in a man, for, and he dwelt among us for 33 years. He humbled himself to dwell in a man, and eat and dwell among us here on earth for 33 years. That is... That is, that is humility. That is humility. It is. It is. If, he could leave, if he could let his throne in heaven where he had opportunity to do, you know, when the father called that, who will I send? He did not look at himself that so he owed me, a son of God. I will not, no, I'm not going anywhere. He humbled himself. So look at it from this angle. We were told that when Jesus accepted to go and die for the whole world, when he died and rose again, we are told that a name was given to him. That is the honor. He was given a name that is above every other name. That oh, the mention oh. of the name, of that name, every name, things on earth must bow. Can you imagine that? 
before Jesus came to earth, Jesus' name was not answerable, yeah. was not being called, was not being used. But because he accepted and he humbled himself on earth, he was given a name that is above every other name that be, that were at that time. And when you call the name of Jesus, everything bows to his. We're told another honor landed on Jesus Christ because what? We're told he was placed on the right side of our, of our God and he sits there and he, what, he commands, he's the one that rules. And we were told again in Revelation that on the last day, he's going to sit on the white throne, sit on the throne, and he's coming. Such a great, magnificent honor. That is what double honor can do. When you honor, when you humble yourself before the Almighty God. I have enjoyed God's promotion. I have enjoyed God's level of greatness in life because I've chosen to be humble at every step of my life. Most of my friends are always asking me that, how come you have so much gone so higher like this at a younger age? I said, brother, there is nothing to it that every level you get in life, you must learn to humble yourself, regardless of what you know, regardless of your gifting, regardless of your talent, you must humble yourself. When you humble yourself, God doubles your honor 10 times. Amen. 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 So if you want to enjoy God's double honor this month and the month ahead, please. Learn from our Lord Jesus Christ. You're going to enjoy double honor for the rest. I can, I'm telling you from experience. I've enjoyed double honor. 2009, when I was appointed to lead PFN, I was just about 19 or there about 20. The person that was serving as my assistant was five years older than me. And my other brother was signing on my, on my cabinet where we had six, four, four years, at least three years older than me. But the honor was bestowed on me at a younger age and lead because what I was humble. I was humble. At that time, things I was doing, I did not take the glory as if I was the one doing it. And the honor landed on me and I was opportune to lead them for four years. So tonight, God is speaking to you that giving you double honor is not a problem. But the question is that, are you humble? I move quickly. Number three, you must be patient. You must That's be right. patient. That's patience right. is key to promotion. Patience is key to promotion. Patience is key to promotion. You know, Isaiah chapter 1, verse 19 to 20. The Bible says that you will eat the fruit of the land if there's a clause there. You are willing and obedient. You see, the fruit of the land are not for the impatient people, are for the patient people. If you're going to eat mm. the fruit of the land, you must be patient. You've been serving your place for five years. You have been asking, I've not been promoted. Please be patient. <laughs> we were told about Abraham that he obtained the promise through patience. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 13 and 15. Hebrews 6, 13 and 15. Abraham obtained the promise through patience. So if you're going to enjoy double honor, you must be patient. Don't say, I've been serving here for 15 years and they have not done anything for me. Mm -hmm. What God is doing concerning your life, by the time God is done with you, is going to wow every other person around you. So if you're going to walk in honor for the rest of the day, I'm, I'm not talking about the month of September. September is gone, but I'm talking about what is ahead of you. What is ahead of you? If you're going to enjoy double honor, <laughs> you must be patient. You must be patient. Patience is key to promotion. You know, That's God right. has got everything planned out in the beginning. In the beginning, he has planned everything out. And this is what it means. Our God, our God is the architect of the world. And he has got the blueprints of our destiny. So every time, the time you and I are going to shine, God has put it down on a paper. And at the appointed time, according to Ecclesiastes, that everything on earth has been timed, has been timed. So you must wait patiently for your time. That is where you can enjoy double honor. But if you run faster than your shadow, if you run faster than it shouldn't, there are tendencies that you might launch up prematurely and premature sometimes don't survive the next phase. Hmm. So if you're going to enjoy honor, please, you must be patient. We've talked about integrity. We've talked about humility. We're talking about patience. Be patient. Don't rush it. Don't rush it. Don't complain. 
I've been serving here. I've been working here. They're not even looking at me. Don't worry. Hmm. By the time God will bestow glory on you, it will, mar it will marvel everyone around you. Like, where have you been? Where have you been? Tonight, God is calling on someone tonight and he's telling you that you need to be more patient. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 13 and 15. I'd like us to read that scripture very quickly. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 13 and 15. And it says, For when God made promise to Abraham, because he could not swear, because he could not swear by no greater, he swore by himself, saying, Surely blessing I will bless thee, and multiplying I will multiply thee. And so after he had waited patiently endured, he obtained the promise. <laughs> Glory be to God. After he had waited patiently, King James placed it there. After he had waited patiently, he obtained the promise. God knows, God knows how long you've been waiting. But tonight I've come to encourage you, please wait. <laughs> wait for it. Wait for it. God will never say a thing and not, he's not like every other man. He will not say a thing and not do it. He must have promised you that you're going to be promoted. You're going to be doing, you're going to do this and that. But it looks as if sort is fading out. What God is about to do in your life is going to marvel everyone around you. But you must pay the price of patience. You must pay the price of patience. Wait patiently for it. And double honor will land on you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Before I continue tonight, I know it's our Bible study, but I'd like us to just pray this prayer very quickly. You're just going to pray and ask the Lord. Lord, please, Remove every element or degree of pride in my life today. Don't let pride destroy me. I'd like you to pray just in a few seconds. Pray it in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. The second Amen. one quickly, just going to pray and ask the Lord and say, Lord, please humble me by yourself. I don't want Amen. situation to humble me because of my pride. Please humble me by yourself. I don't want situation to humble me because of my pride. In the case of fear, please humble me. Talk to God very quickly in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I don't want situations to humble me by yourself. I don't want situation to humble me. I don't want Please, I don't want situation to humble me. Like situations to humble me. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Abba Father. In Jesus, mighty name, we are prayed. All right, number four. We've mentioned three right now: integrity, humility, and patience. Number four. For you to walk in honor, you must have the Holy Spirit. You must have the Holy Spirit. I've enjoyed the benefits, the relationship of Holy Spirit so many times, I've enjoyed it. If you're going to walk in honor for the rest of your life, you must have a close relationship with the Holy Spirit. You must have. Lack of Holy Spirit leads to dishonor. When you don't have the Holy Spirit, you are, lead, you are left alone to do what is not normal. When you don't have the Holy Spirit, you are left alone to do what is not normal. Romans chapter 8, verse 14. Romans chapter 8, verse 14 says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are called the sons, I'm paraphrasing now, the sons and daughters of God. So only those that are led by the Spirit can walk in honor. So if you don't have the Holy Spirit inside of you, you are left alone to do what is not normal, what is not good, what is foolish, what is silly, what is not good. Holy Spirit is the one that ordered the steps. That was why the Bible says that the steps of the righteous are ordered by the Lord. What order your steps is your close relationship with the Holy Spirit. 
when you don't have the Holy Spirit inside of you, you are left alone to do things that are foolish. David understood the place of the Holy Spirit. He begged and cried to God not to take away the Spirit away from him. He cried to God and said, please do not take away the Spirit away from me. Restore unto me the joy of my salvation. He understood the place of the Holy Spirit. Because he knows that if the Spirit leaves him, he's gone. We saw it in the life of Saul. When the Spirit of God left him, he was left alone. He was empty. And we were told that the spirit of demon, spirit of devil landed upon him and started tormenting his life. So if you're going to walk in honor and you want to enjoy a close, I mean, a close relationship, you must have this cordial relationship with the Holy Spirit. When you have this relation with the Holy Spirit, what it does for you is that is the one that will be directing the affairs of your life. Even when you want to go astray, they will say, son, come here. Don't go that way. Come on, son. Don't go there, daughter. Don't go that way. It guides you. Roman says that as many as are led means that you can choose not to be led. That's why Paul was slaying it. He purposely put the word, those that are led. It means that you can choose not to be led. You can do things on your own. You can choose to go anywhere. You can, you can choose to fight for your promotion by yourself. You can choose to talk to your boss anyhow. But... Paul said that for those that are led by the Spirit, you have been called the sons. Being called the sons and daughter of God is an honor. <laughs> the, the children of the devil, they cannot call themselves the sons of God. No. So being called the sons of God and daughter of God is an honor itself. So couple with you are being led, that you are being led again, come on, that is double honor. That is double honor. That is double honor. So tonight, I've come to encourage you. If you're going to enjoy double honor for the rest of your life, regardless of your age, regardless of your background, regardless of anywhere you are from, I tell you, I always tell people that it does not matter your location. It does not matter where you are being transferred to. If you have the Holy Spirit, he's the generator inside of you. It will produce light. You know, if you go to a place where there is no light, maybe there is, there is this, um, there are, the, uh, the power system does not extend to the village. But if you have a small generator, you don't bother about the light. The moment you get to that village, what do you do? You kickstart the generator and light will come out. That is the same thing Holy Spirit does to you. Anywhere it goes with you, whether that place has no life, has no life, the moment you carry the Holy Spirit along with you, it generates the power, the light, and then anything you need for that environment. And in no time, life will be restored to that environment. So, Holy Spirit is our companion. I love calling him my senior partner because I enjoy his partnership. So, he's my senior partner. So, he's also our director. He's the one that should direct our path. When Jesus was leaving the earth, he told the apostles, he said, don't worry, I'm going right now, but don't worry. Relax, guys. Relax, guys. Don't worry. I'm not leaving you alone. I will send a comforter. He will be the one guiding you. He will tell you things in the future. It will tell you things in the present, and sometimes it can bring to your memory things you have forgotten. Hello, this is to tell you that Holy Spirit can reveal to you 10 years' vision. It can reveal it to you if you have the relationship with Him. There is no such honor that a man can have when Holy Spirit has revealed to you what will happen in 10, 5 years from now. <laughs> what more honor is that? When every other person is panicking, just the way Daniel, when uh, the king had a dream and the king was troubled and he could not sleep. <laughs> while Daniel was sleeping, while Daniel was there, he was enjoying himself because of what God had unveiled the, what is going to happen to the land where he was at that time. And the king, the journey that they're going to go, whatever they're going to do for seven years, a man caught the revelation while he was sleeping. So when he woke up, he was just happy. And when they sent for him, he interpreted the dream. And the king said, wow, that is what the Holy Spirit can do. What's more honor than that? What's more honor? Holy Spirit is the revealer of hidden secrets. The secrets right. that have been buried for 10 years that people have been looking for solutions. Holy Spirit is the, is the, or is the generator of solution. When you have a close, I'm using the word close in this teaching, close 
It means that you can have a peripheral relationship and you can have a close, deep relationship. So if your relationship is just on the surface, you don't enjoy to, uh, to see what is inside. But when you have a close relationship with him, you have a deeper relationship. It, it, it opens to you deep revelations. It opens to you informations. It opens to you. It gives you the pattern on which your life will go, your ministry, your career, your business. It blows everything to you. What more honor than that? That everything that will happen in five years, Holy Spirit will unveil it to you. <laughs> you have nothing to worry about. When other people are panicking and they are running etter scatter, you feel relaxed because what? He has told you what to do in the year one. He has told you what to do in year two. He has told you that in year three, don't sow anything. He has told you that I should get to year four, don't sow anything. But in year five, put all, the, all your increase in year one and year two together and invest in year five. That as you invest in year five, you will, you will receive 100 portion of what you produce. What sort of an instruction is that? But someone that is not in a relationship with him, such person will just go and be investing his money in year one, year two, year three, year four, year five. And at the end of year five, everything crashed down. They say there's economic meltdown and all the shares, all the investment is gone. But when you are in a relationship with the Holy Spirit, it saves you costs. It saves you things that you have to use your energy to think. You know, this morning I was talking about cloud computing. You know, cloud computing, it's, it's, uh, it's an advanced way of, of, of putting your data in the server, whereby you don't need a man to do a kind of interface with your data, and it's much easier to maintain and, you know, upgrade and downgrade at any time. The same thing with the Holy Spirit. When you are with the Holy Spirit, when we are with you, you don't have any issue with any man around you. It's the one that directly works with you. It's your own antenna is directly from him. Your source of information is from him. Is the one that teaches you, guides you at all times. So when other people are crashing down, you, you are climbing up. Again, I pray for someone. In this season, you will enjoy the benefits of working with the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. You see, Amen. when a fellow is not filled with the Holy Spirit, something else will fill in the person. That's true. That is true. <laughs> not be empty. No man is born to be empty. There are two At spirits all. in the world. We have the Holy mm. Spirit and the spirit of the devil. When you That's don't true. have the Holy Spirit, the spirit of the devil will take over. Somebody, mm. there must definitely be an administrator in your life. Just the way we have on this platform right now, we have an administrator. If this Zoom meeting ends right now, we can as well push it for an administrator to handle it. So every believer must have an administrator. Just the way your computer has an administrator. Without an administrator, the computer system will not work. The same way with your life. If you don't have the Holy Spirit, I tell you that you have the spirit of devil. So if a man does not have the Holy Spirit, I tell you what the person is having is the spirit of the devil. And I'd like you to know tonight that the spirit of devil does not come in one. They come in multiples. They come in diverse ways. They come in diverse vision and diverse means. And maybe you don't know it. The devil has his own vision. So when they are coming, they come with their vision, mission, and statement. They come everything together and sit in the person's life. And that is why you must not leave your life to enemy to occupy. Because sometimes when enemy occupies a man's life, it is difficult to remove him, except through the power of the Holy Spirit, through deliverance services. It is not easy. For such, if, if Spirit of God leaves you and devil occupies such person, it is usually very difficult for such spirit of devil to move out. We saw it in the life of Saul. When the spirit of devil landed upon him, anytime the spirit landed upon him, he misbehaved. It will only take David to play the harp. It means that any time that David traveled like 100 kilometers away from King Saul, King Saul will be just mad, will just be crying, yay, I got me old. will just be mad, will just be mad for the time that David has disappeared. But the moment... David returned back with his harp and started playing the harp. The Bible says that the Spirit of God will, will dwell upon him and the devil will disappear. As mm. soon as David goes, the devil takes over again. Mm. So it is important for you to know that if you're going to enjoy double honor and you're going to walk in honor for the rest of your life, if anything, you must ask God for. 
is the spirit of God. Let it dwell on you every day. Let it dwell in you every day. Amen. Let it be Amen. by you every time. Amen. When you are not filled, your words will be empty. Hmm. I told us when we treated the part one that people that are called honorable, they reference three things in their life. They reference their words, their future, and their name. Those three things, they value it. They value whatever comes out of their mouth, their name, and their future, because they know that is what makes them honorable. So if you are not filled, your words will be empty. Will be empty. I pray that our words will not be empty in the name of Jesus. When Amen. a believer, when a fellow is not filled with the Holy Spirit, such person is tend to do mistakes, tend to do foolish things, tend to do silly things. The person will not say, hey, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have done that. Hey, I'm sorry, oh Lord, have mercy. Because what? The Spirit of God is not there. Romans 8 verse 14. For as many that are led by the Spirit of God, they are called the sons and daughter of God. That's paraphrased not in the scripture, but the sons also means the daughter. Praise the Lord. Yeah. As I begin to run up tonight, when the Holy Spirit lives in you, four things it will do for you. You will know what to do. One, you will know how to do that thing. Two, you will know where to do it and when to do it. When Holy Spirit lives in you, you will know what to do, how to do it, where to do it, and when to do it. Because what? You have been led. And such things, you are the least to honor. May the Lord help us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Number five. That's going to be my last point tonight. We are treating walking in honor. And we say that if you're going to walk in honor, number one, you must have integrity. You must be humble. You must be patient. And I just said that you must have the Holy Spirit. The last one, which I'm going to crown off tonight, is that you must respect and honor God. You must respect and honor God. Respect is said to be reciprocal. When you don't respect other people, you don't expect to, to be respected as well. So when you don't respect God, you don't respect God's servants, you don't respect the leaders that are in place over you regardless of their age, you don't expect to be honored or respected if as well. We're gonna, I'm going to show you two examples or three examples in the scriptures how God reacted violently to people that did not regard him, that did not honor him. Daniel chapter 4, verse 30 and verse 34. Daniel chapter 4, verse 30 to verse 34. And king spake and said, Is not this great Babylon that I built for my house, for the house of the kingdom, by the might of my power? Can you hear the word of a proud king there? For the honor of my majesty. Can you imagine? Verse 31. While the word was in the king's mouth, there fell a voice from heaven, saying, O king Nebuchadnezzar, to thee it is spoken. The kingdom is departed from thee. Honor left him immediately. Not departed from him instantly. What did he do? Because he did not regard God. He did not give honor to God. And we were told, if you read down to verse 33, the angel told him that because you did not give honor to God, you're going to dwell among the goats, cow, for seven years until you come to realize that you need to give honor to God. And as he finished saying, immediately he departed from the, from the palace and he, and he, he was in the, in the bush for seven years. What crime did they commit? Because he did not honor God. So if you don't honor God, if you don't respect him, I don't want to say it tonight from my mouth, but you know what happens. When you don't honor God with your tithes, you don't honor God where things God has done something for you, and you are saying, Well, I am a master holder today. You know, I went to Crawford, you know, I went to Clifford. You just mentioned, say this and that. 
you know, I'm, I'm professor emeritus, you know, I've gone to the highest of my education, you know, all this by myself, you know, I've traveled around the world, I've made a lot of money, you know, you're just saying all of those things, you're saying it by yourself. What you are saying is that you are telling God, you did not do anything in this success story, oh, I did it all by myself. God mm -hmm. usually reacts violently to such things. That's he right. reacts violently to it. Mm -hmm. Another example is in the book of Acts chapter 12, verse 20 to verse 24. I'm just going to paraphrase that story. It's a very familiar story for some of us that are studying the Bible. Acts chapter 12, verse 20 to verse 24. There's a story of a king called Herod. Herod mm. did the same thing. He did the same thing. His own case was even worse. As he was saying it, we were told that the angel of God came down and gave him a knock from his head. And and instantly, one ate him up instantly yeah. because what? He did not honor God. So again, mm. I'm saying it to you, when you don't honor God, you don't expect to get honor back and God reacts violently to it. My mm. prayer for us tonight, that we will not be destroyed because we refuse to honor God. We refuse to give him the glory. We refuse to give him the praise that is due to him. The Bible says that God will not share his glory with any man. Our God Never. is a jealous God. Never. He does not yeah. share his glory. He does not share his honor with any man. Whatever oh, is due to God. Paul said that everything I am today is by the grace of God. Not Amen. by my might, not by Amen. my power. So Amen. when you don't honor God, God will not honor such fellow and God will react violently to such dishonor. Hmm. Let me give you another example which I'm going to run up tonight. When you also don't honor God's servants, the God's servants or your leaders that God has placed over you, whether the person is young or older than you, you did not regard the person, you did not respect him, you did not honor him. Is the case in the book of 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 23 and 24. 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 23 and 24. There was a story of these young children about Elisha. He was coming from the mountain and the man was tired. And the children start mocking and say, bar head man, bar head man. They were singing and they were abusing the man. And mm -hmm. the man got angry and looked back. And the Bible says that he commanded beers to come from the bush. And we were told that the 40 children plus were destroyed because what? They dishonor God's servant. Mm -hmm. Do you know the reason why God will honor the words of the servant of God? Because they are God's representative here on earth. They are God's oracle. They are God's mouthpiece. And God has bestowed his power inside of them. So anyone that dishonored them, you are equally dishonoring God in their life. And God, you only react violently to it as well. So he will not allow such person to be honored. And God, you only react violently to it. But sometimes there are some servants of God that they are so merciful that they may not do it violently. They might just say, I don't, want, I don't want to lay curse on you right now, but I just let you go. But if they open their mouth and say, you, this person, you will die tomorrow because you dishonor me. That person is telling you that he can die. He can die because God will honor the words from his mouth because what? You have dishonored such person. So please tonight, if you're going to walk in honor for the rest of your life, please keep all the things that we have, we have been teaching this month God is specially designed this month for us because there is something God is driving us to in the months ahead. Beyond the year 2020, beyond the year 2021, if Jesus tarries, there is something God is driving us towards. All this character must be inside of us. These things, you must have them. You must know them and you must be guided by it. That was why Solomon told his children, follow my instruction. Follow it. Do not go out of it. So that as you grow out of it, as you grow on, it keeps like a guy to you. It keeps like a guy to you. You know, as I, as I round up the last scripture, Galatians chapter 6 verse 7 says that, Be not be deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man sow, he will reap. So if you sow dishonor, you reap dishonor. If you sow honor, you reap honor. If you sow disrespect, you owe disrespect. If you sow respect, you, sow, you also reap respect. Regardless of your gifting, talent, age, achievements, or background, please respect people, honor people. Always remember that people are watching you. Remember the story of Geazi. The, uh, Elijah told him that 
Was my eyes not with you? Was my eyes not with you? People are taking note of every of your actions. They are taking note of the way you are talking to them. They are taking note of how you are treating them. They are everything. They are taking notes. The day their turn will come, they will react the same way you did to them. It's a state. Paul said it that whatsoever a man sow. So this has nothing to do with prayer. It is a seed that you have sown. It only takes God's intervention to remove such. But when God decides sometimes not to act, that person will reap what he or she has sown. I pray that we will not reap bad seed in the name of Jesus. So therefore, Amen. understand that you and I are king and priest. We are king and queen. No one should be under, under lube, under underestimate to, uh, or tread upon or, or, or just commonize. Don't understand according to 2 Peter 1 verse 9 that we are a chosen generation. That's why they use the word we, not only you are king. Even though you are in Germany, you are in any way of the world, everyone here on earth, Paul said that we are equal. We are equal. Gentiles and Jews, we are equal. Means that we were made by the same God. The same honor was bestowed upon us. So every one of us, we enjoy the priesthood, we enjoy the, the kingship, we enjoy the prince and the princess benefits. So you should respect everyone. I pray again for us tonight that God, Almighty God, will help us as we put all these things into practice in the name of Jesus. Because of my time, Amen. I will just leave the prayer point because my time is three minutes past the schedule. Thank you so much. The Lord bless you. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Walking in honor. What a great Bible study tonight. I pray for you, Pastor Phillips, that the Spirit of the Lord will not depart from you in Jesus' name. More unction to function and more strength from the Lord in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So right now, um, I would like to ask if there's anyone that has a question um, or if you have a contribution to this wonderful lesson that we have studied together. Um, yes, if you have a question, if you have a contribution, walking in honor. Walking in honor. Yes, anyone? Any question, contribution? No? Okay. Now, um, if, you have, if you don't have a question, then I have a question for us. I have a question for us. Actually, I have two questions for us, but they're going to be very, very brief, quick ones. Um, why is integrity connected with honor? What is the relationship between integrity and honor? Why, why do we have to have integrity to be honor? Yes? Anyone, please? I, I, want, I want you to either put your hand up on the, on the chat uh, thing or, or, or mute your phone and just give us some answer. Why do we need to have integrity to be honored? Yes, anyone? Yes, Dr. Priska, Evangelist uh, Dominic, do you want to give us some answers? No, sir. Thank you. God bless you. Yes, uh, anyone? Apostle Patrick? This is Bible study. We're studying together. The first condition that our teacher gave us that we need to, 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 um, to comply with or to do, if you want to work in honor, is we, have to, we must have integrity. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah. Um, the definition of integrity I will give you is um, integrity is doing, it's not doing what others are doing, mm -hmm. but doing what is right. 
Our God is a God, a righteous God, not a wrong God. So right is right. So integrity is as a born again Christian, you have confessed Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, and you want to live in double honor, you want to be honored, you want to be a man and a woman of integrity. Whatever you are doing, if no one is there or watching, you have to do it right at all times. To have that peace of mind, because the shalom will only come to you when you do what is right. When you are one leg in and one leg out, you will not have that peace. And you don't expect, like where uh, man, uh, teacher said in Galatians, that God is not mocked. Whatever a man soweth, he shall reap. So as a man of integrity, what are you sowing in your life? What are you sowing in the life of others? If you permit me to use this, in, at work, there's a friend, we worked a colleague. He's from one of these side that we're just predominant. That's that mindset that no one is better than him. So we worked together. But just two days ago, he came to me, Patrick, talk to me. Patrick, talk to me. Yesterday again, he said, there's something around you. What he's trying to say, because he's not a believer, is that I'm always quiet. I don't talk at work. The integrity I'm trying to bring in here that he has seen is that he said there's something around me that gives me peace, that I should tell him about God. So for you to be a man of integrity, you are also a mirror of people are watching. Your attitude, your character at work, how would people see you? If you say you are a Christian, you are a believer, what would they say about you? So your integrity and the importance cannot be overemphasized to be a true person of double honor. For you to have that honor, you have to live in the biblical principle and, and live the life of Christ. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Pastor Paul from Birmingham. I saw your hand up, Pastor Paul, on mute, and then try and help us. Yeah, Pastor Paul, you can unmute your phone. Can you hear me now, sir? Yes, we can, can hear you now. Go. Hallelujah. I was saying that integrity have to do with God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because what makes us to live and a life of integrity because we want to isolate ourselves with God's law. God's law. Which means that God will now honor us because everything that have to do with God is honor. So when you live in the God integrity, which means that you are now about to discover your purpose here on earth. Because we are here for a purpose. When you are living in integrity, God will reveal you the, the message, the purpose, the plan that they have for you here on earth. So you now you become someone that will be flourishing among the people. Why? Because God has revealed you the truth. Because you have been living in the integrity. So every Christian must live in integrity life because this is our success area. Amen. 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 Thank God bless you, sir. Thank you so much. Amen. God bless you too. Um, you know, the reason why I asked the question is that I want us to understand the connection between integrity and honor from God. Now, if you remember the case of Joseph, when he was in Egypt, he met himself in Potiphar's house as the caretaker of the whole of Potiphar's house. And suddenly, Potiphar's wife was trying to seduce him to sleep with her. Joseph resisted and said, no. 
But the woman would not allow him to rest. She kept chasing after him. And Joseph said no. And at a point, she came and almost wanted to force herself on Joseph. But he refused and said unto his master's wife, Behold, my master wotted not what is with me in the house. And he had committed all that he had to my hand. This I'm reading Genesis 39, verse 8. I've just read 8, and I want to now read verse 9. It says, there is, verse 9, Genesis 39, 9. He said, there is none greater in this house than I. Neither had he kept back anything from me but thee. Because thou art his wife, how then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? I want us to understand that when we maintain our integrity, which God expects of us, we are not maintaining integrity to the man that we are maintaining it to. We are maintaining it to God. So our integrity must be an integrity that we do in honor unto God. And it does not matter whether we are meeting someone that is the integrity is before someone that is a Christian or someone that is not a Christian. Our integrity must be one standard integrity to all people, whether before the unbelievers or before believers. And when we do it, we, we must recognize that we are doing it to honor God. We are doing it in respect unto God. And when we do that, God will surely honor us. If you look at Joseph, even though Joseph went through one or two different, um, what I'll call a valley experiences. But finally, God honored him. He became the second in command in Egypt. He became the prime minister. He became a man with power and authority. And everyone that have mocked him before, they came to bow before him. Why? Because Joseph maintained integrity to honor God. And I want to pray that the Lord will help us too to have integrity wherever we go, whether it's within God's children or outside God's children, we must maintain integrity. And when we do that, you will find that there's no way that God will not honor us. He said, if you honor me, I will honor you. If you honor me, I will honor you. May the Lord help us tonight in Jesus' name. So that, that is really the, um, the end of our Bible study tonight. Amen. Um, if, if there's no other question, oh, Pastor Salma, you want to contribute something from Pakistan? Uh, at this moment, uh, not, but uh, maybe in future, I will be contribute something with you. Oh, good. Okay. Okay. God bless you, sir. All right. Is there any uh, other contribution or any other question? Because we'll be going straight into announcement and we're looking to close. If there's no question or contribution. Yeah, I have a question. Uh, if, yes, we ha if we have patience and we are humble and uh, uh, if uh, if two both things in our body and in our mind and we are act on it so uh, uh, what is the uh, guarantee uh, we will be success in our life <laughs> god bless you what a, what a great question yeah what a great, uh, what what a, uh, uh, please uh, pastor uh, i want everybody to listen to your question because i i got it but please ask that question again so that everybody can hear. I, I, I'm give the uh, question ans answer of this question. Yes. Uh, if we have patience and we have mm -hmm. uh, humble. Yeah. When we uh, when we are humble, we when we will be speak, we will think about it and we speak yeah. those things which is benefit for other, which is benefit for us. 
and which is blessed for other which is blessed for those who are uh, love to jesus then if we are humble then we speak only word of god only on the verse of the god it will be successful for us for others and we give glory to god hallelujah 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 well you have you have answered some part of your question because your question was that if we walk um humble and if we are patient what is yeah. the guarantee that will be successful isn't it yeah 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 so and you have you have answered some part of that question can i ask if um, anybody else wants to help online um mommy Ada, do you want to help with that because i see that you've unmuted all right okay does anybody want to contribute to that if you are humble if you are patient if you have if, 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 you are, if you have applied integrity, you know, if you have done the things that our teacher said we should do, how, what is the guarantee that will be successful? And what is the guarantee that God will honor us? That is the question. Great, praise yes. the Lord. Hallelujah. Right, I'll just use example of um, Abraham in the book of um, Hebrews. You know, we're told that Abraham obtain the promise that God promised him that is going to be the father of the nations and everything that God said to him. He obtained and received the promise because he was patient and he was humble. So if we, if like I told us before that, if you have the Holy Spirit, is the one that will be teaching you all those things and he will be reminding you that what God has said, he will do it. So it's, it's always guaranteed. This has to do with God. It's God factor. It's not man factor. When it comes to God factor, it is 100 over 100% 100 sure and guaranteed that what God said is going to do concerning you, which is the end product of patience and humility, is that I will uplift you. He said that if you humble yourself, I will exalt you. That is the end product of humility. If you are patient, you will eat the fruit of the land so that is the end product it is guaranteed praise the lord hallelujah hallelujah, hallelujah. hallelujah. Uh, wonderful uh, wonderful answer i am very blessed uh, that yeah, right. answer like I, I i want to give and i'm very happy i'm very happy to hear this question and answer god bless you pastor um, you know I, I also what i want to add to us tonight is that the greatest thing that God has in the whole universe is his word. And he said he honors his word above his name. God is so sure about his word. He said, he said heaven and earth may pass away. Not a single dot of his word will go without fulfilling the purpose for which it has been sent. The word of God is not something that any human being should play with. The word of God is not something that anyone should debate. Nobody oh. should try to debate the word of God. Anyone that tries to debate the word of God is only trying to attract ruin and destruction to himself or herself. When God says you should humble yourself so that he can lift you up, the word of God is, has already been said, and it is settled. What we should do is we should put, place a demand on that word. When we are going through that exercise of humbling ourselves and having patience and applying integrity, we should also be reminding God that God, you've said it in your word, that if I should humble myself, you will elevate me. If I should be patient, you will fulfill my purpose and my dreams. If I should have integrity, you will honor me and you'll be reminding God. Sometimes God wants us to remind him about his word. That is the reason why if we do not obey the word of God, we will not be able to have the confidence and the boldness to remind him of it. Somebody a Christian who is paying his tithe now, 
if you are paying your tithe and then suddenly problems come in your business also also or you make a mistake in your em employment and they want to uh, give you a query they want to sack you you can put it to god that lord you promised in word that if i pay my tithe you said i should try you and if you will not open the windows of heaven you also promise that you will rebuke the devourer and all those things that destroy my vine why is this going to happen now you will find that immediately god will honor his word Situ your situation will turn around and that job god will save it for you that business god will save it for you but if you have not obey and comply with the word of god you will not be able to remind god about it and if you try to remind god about it when you have not fulfilled it then it means you are trying to be an hypocrite before god and you can only fool yourself and you can fool another fellow man nobody can fool god that please, is the reason please, why please, it is please, good please, for Lord. every single one of us to try our best to just fulfill all the doors said the lord so that on the day that the enemy will raise his holy head we will be able to boldly and confidently go to god and say father look at the enemy he has come but this is what your word says and i have done it you have you have settled your case you have already finished the matter because immediately God will respond. Hezekiah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Please, God. Very, yes. very, very, very powerful point. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So, so uh, King Hezekiah, because King Hezekiah has done things that God told him to do, when the prophet went there to tell him that, King, the Lord said is to prepare your house and put your house in order. You are going to die. It's time for you to go. King Ezekiel went and faced the wall and presented what God has promised him, the things that he has done, how he has fulfilled the laws of God, how he has served God fully. He said, God, are you now going to reward me with this? Because King Hezekiah has done those things genuinely and sincerely and faithfully with passion, God sent the prophet back. The prophet has not even come out of the courtyard of the king's palace. God sent him back and said, go and tell King Hezekiah that I've changed my mind. He's not going to die anymore. Why? Because King Hezekiah reminds God about the things that he has done which are the things God commanded him to do. So we need to understand that when we obey the word of God, when we, when we fulfill the promises of God, when we obey the commandment of God, we, would, we are simply doing it for our own security and to our own blessing. Because on the day that the enemy will rise up, those are the things that you can use to present your case before the Lord and God will have no other choice but to honor his word. As God. Hallelujah. God, Hallelujah. God is not a covenant-breaking God. God is not a liar. God will never deny his word. I'm telling you, if, if my business is going one way down, and I know that I've been faithful with my child, I can go to God and say, Father, this is what you said, and look at my account. I have paid my tithe faithfully regularly. This is your word. I want you to reverse this downtrodden situation. Re restore my business. Revive my business. God will revive it. Because he's not going to allow anybody to come and accuse him that he's not a faithful God. So let us have a record and collection of activities and things that we can use to make our way to come out of situations that the enemy wants to use to molest us. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So tonight tonight has been great and awesome. Thank God for
I, I have been blessed and thank God for Pastor Phillips and, and, um, and all those that who have contributed tonight. May the Almighty God bless every one of us in Jesus' name.